let's, let's talk about God, his, his emotions, because a lot of times we don't think that he's an emotional God, but he is. God emotionally detests evil, long suffer. He's long suffering, and he's also compassionate. Let me show you just a couple of these in Genesis chapter 15 and verse 16. But in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorite is not yet full. Now, you might not see a lot of the attributes of God in that that verse, but it, there is. There's a lot in there. Do you see in here? Now, what, what we're talking about right here in Genesis 15 is we're talking about this, this, uh, this time that God spent with Abraham. Yeah, his name's Abram here. And he's giving this, this other part of this covenant. And he says in verse 16, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. What this means is he's waiting, he's waiting on his actions because more activity from human beings have to happen. So he's both compassionate, he's full of mercy, and he's letting people have more time to choose. He's, in other words, he's unchanging, but he lets things play out on earth. That's an interesting part because and people might say, well, what's the big deal there? Well, <laughs> All the fake gods on the planet, all of our ideals of, you know, it, when we talk about the Ten Commandments, we talk about the very first one, let, let, um, um, let no other gods uh, come before me. Is that how it's worded? Let no other gods come before me. I think another important part of, of understanding what God meant by that is we also should not be guilty of making up our own version of the biblical God. You know, I, sometimes when I teach, I'll have people say, well, my God would never do that. Well, that, it doesn't, that phrase doesn't matter, you know, um, or I lost my faith because I can't believe God would do that or something like that. We have to let God be God and, and let him tell us who he is. Um, but thankfully, I always kind of say it this way. Thankfully, the most powerful being the world has ever known is also a loving being, thankfully. I mean, because if God wasn't a loving being and he was, he, he wished the very worst for you, what on earth would you do about it? Who are you going to go talk to? You're going to have a city council meeting and complain. I mean, what would you do? I mean, who cares? Well, who cares what you think? Yeah. It just so happens to be that our God is a knowable God. (laughs) He's a knowable God. He is a loving God. He's a compassionate God. Exodus 34, 6 says, and the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. So this is the, this is the characteristics of God that we see in the Bible. He's, he's a spirit. He's not touched with these physical things, but yet he became physical to free us from the condemnation of a physical sin. He's eternal, he's unchanging, he knows all things, and he's, he's, he's fundamentally a good God. He's fundamentally on the side of righteousness and truth, and, and he provides mercy, and he's patient, and he's long-suffering. These are all characteristics and attributes of God. If you like this video, hit that like and subscribe button, and check out the full episode by clicking the link below.